Good morning. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Today we're going to be reading in Joshua chapter 19. And I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer. And you can pray along as well. Holy Father, I just pray that as we look into your word today, dear Lord, I pray you would reveal yourself to us in new ways. Lord, help us to fall deeper and deeper in love with you as we go throughout your word. Help us to develop a whole new understanding of the scriptures and just a whole new love for you. I pray you would just illuminate our lives. Help us to shine so brightly in the world around us that people will come to know you. Help us to be bold in proclaiming the gospel and sharing it with those who need to hear it. You commanded us to do it. You told us to be a witness and you told us to share your love with those around us and to share the good news of what you've done for us. Holy Father, I just pray that we will do that. that we will be courageous. And that we will be loving and caring of the world around us. And not get caught up in the political things and arguing with people when it's things that don't matter in light of eternity. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. In your holy name I pray. Amen. All right. Today we're going to be in Joshua chapter 19. The second lot came out for Simeon for the tribe of his descendants by their clans, but their inheritance was within the portion of Judah's descendants. Their inheritance included were Sheba or Sheba, Maleda, Hazer Shul, Bela, Ezem, Eltolad, Bethel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazer Susa, Beth Lebel, and Sheruan. Thirteen cities with their villages Ain, Rimen, Ether, and Ashon. Four cities with their villages. And all the villages surrounding these cities as far as Baalath Beer, Ramah of the south. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Simeon's descendants by their clan. The inheritance of Simeon's descendants was within the territory of Judah's descendants because the share for Judah's descendants was too large for them. So Simeon's descendants received an inheritance within Judah's portion. The third lot came up for Zebulun's descendants by their clans. The territory of their inheritance stretched as far as Sarid. Their border went up westward to Marla, reached Dabasheth, and met the brook east of Jotnim. From Sarid it turned east toward the sunrise, along the border of Chrysleth Tabor, went to Dabareth, and went up to Japhia. From there it went east toward the sunrise, to Gathhefer, and to Ethkazan. It extended to Rimen, curving around to Nia. The border then circled around Nia on the north to Hanathan, and ended at the valley of Iftahil along with Kadath, Nahalil, Shimron, Adela, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of Zebulun's descendants by their clans, these cities with their villages. The fourth lot came out for the tribe of Issachar's descendants by their clans. Their territory went to Jezreel and included Cheseloth, Shunem, Hepharim, Shion, Anaharath, Rabbath, Kishon, Ebed, Rima, Inganim, Inhadath, Inhada, Beth Pezez. The border reached Tabor, Shahuzuma, and Beth Shemesh and ended at the Jordan. Sixteen cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Issachar's descendants by their clans, the cities with their villages. The fifth lot came out for the tribe 
of Asher's descendants by their clans. Their boundary included Helketh, Hela, Beaton, Akshath, Alamelech, Amad, Mishel, and reached westward to Carmel and Shihor Libneth. It turned eastward to Beth Dagon, past Zebulun in the valley of Iftahel. Their boundary included Helketh, Hela, Betan, Akshath, Alamelech, Almad, and Mishel, and reached westward to Carmel and Shihor Libneth. It turned eastward to Beth Dagon, past Zebulun, and the valley of Iftahel, north toward Bethamech and Nile, and went north to Kabul, Ebron, Rehob, Hammon, and Cana, as far as Great Sidon. The boundary then turned to Ramah, as far as the fortified city of Tyre. It turned back to Hosea and ended at the sea, including Mahalab, Oxib, Amma, Aphek, and Rehob, 22 cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Asher's descendants by their clans, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out for Naphtali's descendants by their clans. Their boundary went from Heleth and from the oak in Zainanim, including Adamanikeb and Jabnil as far as Lakam, and ended at the Jordan. To the west, the boundary turned to Asnath Tabor and went from there to Hukuk, reaching Zebulun on the south, Asher on the west, and Judah at the Jordan on the east. The fortified cities were Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Chinnereth, Adama, Ramah, Hazer, Kedesh, Edra, and Hazer, Iron, Migdalel, Horam, Bethanath, and Beshemesh. Nineteen cities with their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Naphtali's descendants by their clans, the cities with their villages. The seventh lot came out for the Danat tribe by its clans. The territory of their inheritance included Zora Eshel, Irshemesh, Shobek, Sholabin, Ajalon, Ithwa, Elan, Timna, Ekron, Eltika, Gibbethon, Bela, Jehud, Benabarak, Gethrimen, Mijarkin, and Rakon with the territory facing Joppa. When the territory of the Danites slipped out of their control, they went up and fought against Lishem, captured it, and struck it down with the sword. So they took possession of it, lived there, and renamed Lishem after their ancestor Dan. This was the inheritance of the Danite tribe by its clans, the cities with their villages. When they had finished distributing the land into its territories, the Israelites gave Joshua, son of Nun, an inheritance among them. By the Lord's command, they gave him the city, Timnath Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim, which he requested. He rebuilt the city and lived in it. These were the portions that Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the families distributed to the Israelite tribes by lot at Shiloh in the Lord's presence at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So they finished dividing up the land. Joshua chapter 19 is where they finish dividing up the land and distributing it. So they finish distributing the land and then Joshua. He receives what was promised to him by God by the Lord. He received his portion last, just like a good leader. So Joshua is actually a picture of Jesus. And here we see Jesus always puts us first. He always puts his people first. That's why he came to earth. And he went to the cross for us because he put us first. This is definitely not something he necessarily wanted to do. He did that because he put us first. And so that is what stands out to me in Joshua 19. is the good example that Joshua leaves us. 
in just putting others first. Whether you're a leader or not, you're a leader in some capacity. But as Christians, we should be putting others ahead of ourselves. God tells us to do that. He also says the first will be last, and the last will be first. So in light of that, then we should be putting each other first and we'll be rewarded for that. But that's not why we should do it. But we should just put others ahead of ourselves because if each one of us did that, it would be a better world. But as Christians, we're told to do it. So that's, that's what I received from that is how how selfless Joshua was. Joshua is a good example to us here on putting those under you, above you. He didn't see himself as above them. He just put them first. We will be looking at Joshua chapter 20 tomorrow. And that one is a short chapter, but it's about the cities of refuge. So I hope you will join in on that one. And I hope each of you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.